Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and let's continue with this series of Python. Now we have talked about what is Python and we have talked about how to install Python on your machine. It's time to start with the actual stuff, right? And we are waiting for this. Now the step one would be, of course, you need to open your IDE. Now if you remember, in the installation we have installed two softwares. One is the interpreter and second is your PyCharm. But we'll not be using PyCharm in this tutorial. We'll start with the basics so that you will be having that hands-on experience on IDLE as well. So let's try it out. So what I will do is I will open my I IDLE and in that, so this is your prompt, okay? So this is your prompt. This is where you will type your code now. You know, before going for the actual code, we have a question here. Why do we code and why do we write a code? Now think about this. We are living in a world where everything is done with the help of computers, right? Example, if you want to send an SMS, if you want to send an email, you don't have to do that. Your computer will do it for you if you instruct it. Example, nowadays we have this amazing thing, you know, we have Siri on iPhone and then we have Google Assistant on Android phones. You know, you can ask them to do things for you. Example, you want to set an alarm, you can, you know, they will do it for you. But then how they understand what you want to say. So you need to talk to a computer. And if you want to talk to a computer, you need to understand their language, right? And the language which computer understands is binary code, which is zeros and ones. Now that means if you want to talk to computer, you need to, you need to talk to them in terms of zeros and ones. Now it is not practically possible, right? Of course. So what you have to do is you need to use a language which will, which both will understand. And of course, do we, so we all know English language, but Computer will not understand plain English, right? Because we have some uh, grammatical stuff here. So what we have done is we have created programming languages. Now those are not actually, uh, example, we have high level languages. Now those are not exactly a binary code and they're not even exactly same as English. They are somewhat, you know, uh, they have their own protocols. They have their own grammar, which we use. So when I say English, so we have level one English, then we have level two, which is programming language. And then we have level three, which is your, uh, which is your binary format. So you understand English. So what you will do is you will learn a programming language, let's say Python in this case, and then you will write a Python code, which will get converted into a binary format, which a computer will understand. So if you say, hey computer, uh, do something for me. So let's go with us very simple stuff here. Let's say I want to add two numbers. So you will say, hey computer, two plus three. A computer will say, okay, five. But then how do you talk to a computer in this case? So we are using Python and then we have an interpreter. In fact, in Python, it's one of, as, as, we, as we discussed, it's one of the easiest language, right? So what I will do is I will say two plus three. This is the simplest task you can do on Python. So I will say two plus three. It works, you can see we got five. Yay, so this is working. What else? Uh, what about subtraction? You know, we, we love mathematics, right? So let's apply all the arithmetic operations here. Let's try nine minus eight. It should be one, right? We, we got one, so yes, subtraction also works. Okay, what else we can use? Can we use multiplication? Let's try. Four into six, it should be 24. Yeah, that's right, we got the answer. So yes, addition, subtraction, multiplication works. What about division? Okay, let's try. So when I say division, it should be eight divided by four, and I'm expecting answer to be two. Yeah, it's two, but hold on. There is a difference here. You can see if when we say two plus three, we got five, nine minus eight, which is one. So when you subtract two numbers, we, we are getting that number, right? And specifically, these are integer numbers, right? We all use integers. But then when you divide a number, it is giving you a point value. Now this point value is also called as float numbers. So we have integers and then we have float. Now float stands for floating point representation. Okay, uh, but why it is 2.0? Because when you divide numbers, you might get point values. Right? Example, when you say five divided by two, you will get 2.5. Example, let's try it out. So if I say five divided by two, you got 2.5 and you want that 0.5 value, right? That's why it converts your number or your output into a float value because you want it, they want to give you the exact value. But what if you don't want it? What if you want only the quotient part? Example, when I say five divided by two, you want only two, you don't want point, point 0.5 value. So we can do that. You know, we if you want only integer output, so we don't want float now, we want only integer, you can do that. You can say five, instead of giving one slash, you have to give two slash. Now this is also called as integer division or it is also called as flow division. Uh, so when I said on this code, you got two. So this is working, yeah. Okay, uh, what else we can do here? Can I do, uh, you know, combination of this arithmetic operation? Example, let's say eight uh, plus nine, yeah, and then subtract it by 
uh, let's say 10 is it possible and uh, let's try so it works you know so you can have multiple operations but then we have to follow grammar right if you say 8 plus 9 and then subtract you forgot to type 10 there it will give you an error which is invalid syntax and that's why you need to follow the grammar as well so in as in uh, when you learn a language you need to follow grammars in the same way in programming as well you have to follow grammar uh, can i use those bracket stuff which we used to use, use in mathematics yes we can so example let's say we have eight and then we, I'm adding that value, but then I also have a value which is 2 into 3. Now, which one will be done first? Of course, the multiplication part, right? But then what if you want to do it? Oh, let's try this first. So you can see we got 14, which is 8 plus 6. But what if I want to say 8 plus 2, which is 10 and then 3? So in that case, you need to use brackets, right? If you remember the board mass rule. So I will say 8 plus 2, which is in the brackets and then into 3. So you can see we got 30. So yes, this also works. So when you multiply, so if you give a bracket, it will be solved first. Okay, this is cool, right? Now what else we can do here? Uh, what if I want to find a power of, or you can say exponent, you know, so let's say if you have two raised to three or five raised to six, how can I do that? So I will say two, I want to find cube of two. So in that case, I can say two into two into two, yeah, we can do that. But then what if you have two raised to 10? You cannot simply type two into two into two into 10 times, right? Because this will give the right answer, which is eight. Otherwise you can say two, you can give double star and three. So double star or double asterisk symbol simply means power of. So when you say two raised to three, so this is two asterisk asterisk three. And you can see we got eight. So that's how you have to find, you have to do this, all this operation. So we, now we know how to add two numbers, how to subtract two numbers, and then multiplication, division, uh, flow division. Uh, what else we can do here? In fact, you know, we can, uh, we can also do modulus. Now what is modulus here? Let's say I'm dividing, a two, I'm dividing two numbers, which is 10 uh, divided by two, or maybe three in this case. Now it's a 10 divided by three, it will give you three, right? But then we also have a remainder here, which is one. So if I, when I say 10 divided by, which is the integer division, you got three, that's right. But what if I want the remainder part of it? So I would say 10, and we have to use a special symbol here, which is modulus, and we'll say three. You can see we got one, which is a remainder. So when you say 10 mod three, you will get a remainder, which is one. Okay, this works, yay. Now, you know all the operators, right? Now what else we can do here? Now till this point, we have discussed about, you know, the, the we have discussed about two types. One is the integer type, which we have done here. And then we have talked about float. What other types we can have here? Can we have string? You know what a string means? It's a combination of characters. Example, my name, Naveen, is a string. Python is a string. Camera is a string. YouTube is a string, right? So we have to use, can we, can we use string here? We can, let's try. So what I will do is, whenever you want to use string, you should, it should, you should always use single quote or double quote. So let's try. So I will use my name first. So I will say single quote and Naveen. So we have to use a quotes here. So you have to say Naveen. And enter, you can see we got the same value. Naveen, we, have, we got Naveen. Now there's another way of printing these values. You know, you can also print by providing some functions. Oh, that's a new word now. Now what are functions? In Python language, we have certain functions which we can use. And one of the function is print. Now what print means or what function means is, it is a set of tasks which you will be doing. So example in print, which is inbuilt, it has certain tasks which it will do. You just need to call it. Uh, can we define our own functions? Yes, we can. So print is an inbuilt function. We can define our own functions as well. So you can do all these operations in one function. You can do that. Let's, we'll see that later. How do we define our own function? But time being, let's use print. And whenever you have a print, you normally give this round brackets to pass any parameter. Let's say if you want to pass something to the function, you can do it here. In this case, I want to pass my own name. So I'm saying print Navin. Uh, so you can see it works. We got Navin as a value there. Okay, that works. Now, if you see the difference between Navin, the earlier command here, if you compare this one with this one, see the output. So in the earlier one, the single code is getting printed as well. But in the second one, it is only printing my name. And that looks beautiful, you know. Okay, let's try to print something else. I will say print. And here, I want to print, let's say, Naveen's laptop. So Naveen's laptop. It should print Naveen's laptop, right? When I say enter, oh, we got an error. That's weird. Now, what went wrong here? Now, if you observe here, we have single code as a starting one. And then we also have a single code here. So that means that is one string. And then this thing, which is S laptop, it is not as a part of that single quote. That's where, the, that's where the problem starts. So you cannot simply have single quote anywhere, right? So how do you solve this problem? 
To solve this problem, we have two solutions. The first one is, you instead of using single quotes, you can use double quotes. Example, you can say print, and in double quotes, you can say Naveen's laptop. Now since, so starting and ending is done with the help of double quotes, you don't have to worry about the single quote in between. And if I say enter, and you can see we got the output as Naveen's laptop. Now what else, what other commands we can do? So this, this thing works here. I will have to think about this. What if I want to print double quotes in a statement? Let's say we have print inside double quotes. I'm saying Naveen laptop, but I want to print laptop in double quotes. Can I do that? Example, the output should be Naveen and laptop, but then the laptop should be in double quotes. We cannot do that because, you know, the first double quotes and second double quotes will be getting ended here. So this, this is my first string. What about this laptop? Now, in that case, we will be using single quote. So single quote and end with single quote. So you have to make sure the string part should be different from the part which are inside. So if inside we have double quotes, then outside we should be using single quote, right? That makes sense. Right, so you can see we got the output. But here's a trick. What if I, what if I have both in the string? Example, uh, let's say we have print. I want to say Naveen's laptop. And you can see we have both now. We have double quotes and we have single quote both. Uh, that's where the problem starts. So what you will do now? Because if I say enter, you got invalid syntax. In that case, we will say, single quote Naveen's and then in double quotes we'll say laptop. The issue is with this S right? This S is coming before a single quote. So we have to tell your Python, hey Python can you just skip that special meaning of that single quote and the way you do that is by giving a slash. So when you say backslash it will make sure that you it will ignore the special meaning of that single quote. So when I say enter it works you know. So these are, these are the basic fundamentals which we're talking about. Now let's do some fun here. So again we'll continue with the print later but we have some fun thing here. What if you want to print Naveen two times or you want to print Naveen three times? Can I do that? Of course you can right? You can type Naveen and then Naveen again or you can also use a plus character here. So if you want to concatenate two strings, so we have two strings here right? We have Naveen and we have Naveen. So when I say enter, so we can, you can see we have Naveen and Naveen so we are combining it. What if I want to print Naveen three times or 10 times? In that case, you know, you can play with the numbers as well. So you can say 10 into, in single code, you can say Naveen and say enter, you can see we got Naveen 10 times, yeah? So Python is fun actually, you know, you can, you can play with it, you can do some experiment, that's amazing. What if I want to print this one? You tell me, okay, you, get, you try to guess it, will it work or not? Just pause the video, guess it, let, let me know in the comment section if it will work or not, and then we can continue. What I will do is I will print something, I would say C colon slash, I have a, I have a directory called docs slash Naveen. So pause the video, think about it, and let's see uh, what output you're giving. Let's try and say enter. Oh, this is weird. We were expecting it will print C colon docs slash Naveen, but unfortunately it is giving a new line and then a win. What's wrong? Now slash n has a special meaning in Python. What is that special meaning? And the meaning is, it, it means new line. So slash n means new line. And that's what is happening here. It prints, it is printing c colon slash docs and then it comes to a new line because of slash n. It is saying a win. Okay, what I do is I want to print it, I want to print it as it is. How do I do that? It's very simple. Uh, you just need to cancel the special meaning of that thing, right? So you want to print this string as it is, which is also called as raw string. So I want to print this one as a raw string. In that case, you just specify R before the thing and you will say C colon slash docs slash Naveen. So we are printing this stuff as it is. So when you say R, it means raw string. Don't try to convert it. That's what you are saying to Python. Hey, don't just try to, don't try to convert that slash into a new special character. And say enter, it works, yeah. So everything is looking good now. So I hope you enjoyed this stuff which we are doing here, uh, playing with this stuff. So in this, in this video, we have only talked about how can we use certain operators and then playing with printf. In the next video, we are going to talk about how to use variables. Now, if you are enjoying this series, let me know in the comment section uh, about your thoughts. And if you have any questions, you can put that as well. I do read your comments, by the way, and if so that I can answer that in the next video. And if you are liking my videos, so click on the like button and do subscribe the channel for further videos. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye.